I think my worst sort of nightmare is you, you get people that stand very close to you, those sort of people that stand there and talk Invading to you. Invading your personal space. Yeah, yeah, and I'm sort of like that because mm -hmm. I really don't want people sort of close to me at all. Um, if somebody sort of, you know, my sister, for example, may have you know be crying or something yeah. basically when somebody would be upset, very difficult your natural to feel. reaction yeah. would be to sort of throw your arms around them give them a hug I, you know i've seen other people do it and i think oh i just couldn't do that I and can't do that okay so worst case scenario something terrible that happened to yeah, your sister you and she to, really yeah. needed a, a shoulder what would be the worst possible thing that could happen under those circumstances i don't know maybe they would recoil or something okay how would that make you feel <sighs> ashamed okay Ashamed. All right. How likely do you think that sort of reaction is going to be? Let's say on a scale of one to ten. My sister, probably like one. You know. Okay. So virtually non-existent. With yeah. a sister, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um. So let's go to someone like a reasonable friend. Um. No, I don't think that's very likely, even with just a friend. But maybe okay. somewhere in the middle, or maybe in my mind, I would think that they would then go home and say to their other half, oh, Carol gave me a cuddle today, but I really feel yeah. as if, you know, somebody should have a word with her or something, yeah. you know? So, if this particular person, you know, has an issue, so what? <laughs> you bet it's not so what to me. What's really important, I think, is to get her to a, a state where she can feel uh, comfortable. I've advised Carol to talk about her condition in a safe environment, so perhaps with her sister or best friend, uh, people who she trusts and who she knows aren't going to be cruel or unpleasant with her feelings. Jeremy has forced Carol to realise that her secrecy is now more of a problem than the smell it is meant to hide. I realise now that you just you can't live like that, you can't keep everything inside. Quite often it's my last sport of night and first sport in the morning. And I think if I'm sort of honest with people and it's a more open thing, then I can keep it in proportion. I don't think I've got anything to lose. There's no going back for Carol. She's about to take a giant step and confess her secret to those closest to her. Thomas recently had his first bad experience as a fish order sufferer. You um, started making your Easter card yet, Tom? That's cool. Some child said she wasn't sitting next to Tom because he, he smelled, basically. That did upset him because he's not aware of the smell himself. Vicky is concerned her son's condition is getting worse. She's taking him to the Children's Hospital in Birmingham to see Thomas's consultant. We've noticed it getting sort of worse, the odour. Is that going to happen as he gets older? And is there anything more we can do? to help him. And Thomas has his own question for the doctor. I want to ask the doctor, um, like, when will it go? Keep going. <laughs> Dr. Chris Hendricks is monitoring Thomas closely because he's so young. When are we? You're nearly there. Look there, you're nearly there. I can start smelling him at the moment. Really? Yes, I can get the fishy smell more at the moment. Thomas's order starts in his stomach, then comes out through the hole of his body. It's caused by having too much of a smelly chemical in his system called trimethylamine, which, unlike the rest of us, he's unable to break down. Instead, the chemical is excreted through Thomas's sweat, urine, and breath. Just go a little bit. The other way to do is if you put your hands like this, and you just breathe like that. Dr. Hendricks is aware of the particular problems for very young sufferers. These children would get in situations where they are being called names, uh, and it's not unusual to find 
oh, that's the smelly one in the class, uh, sit away from him or her. And I think that becomes the social stigma. To be honest, last week, that was the first time I've really smelled it on his breath. It's always in his hair or on his body. But last week was the first time. That's why I thought, is it getting worse? Or Because we've only just noticed it on his breath. The kind of teenage years is classically the age when most of these patients are diagnosed. Yeah. So it's quite unusual to find somebody as young as Thomas, which most probably means he's got the disease in the more severe end of the yeah. spectrum. Tom, have you got a question? Yeah. When will it go? When will it go? Unfortunately, never. What we can do is we can deal with it, so we can make it better, and we can teach you ways of doing things that it's not as bad, but it won't go away ever, unfortunately. So we'll have to find a way to make sure it's not a big problem. We do know in boys and girls that natural body odor increases around the teenage years. So in Thomas's case, that would happen in the next few years. Combine that with the odor of rotting fish as it's sometimes described, his problems is likely to increase as he's getting older. And also we know that young children are usually fairly kind to their peers, but this tends to change as they move into the teenage years. Thomas's condition may be forever, but there is still hope of him living a normal life. It's the day of reckoning for Carol. She's on her way to see her best friend Sharon, who lives close by in South End. Carol wants to tell her the truth. I'm quite anxious. I did toss and turn a lot last night and sort of went through different sort of ways of saying it and ways of not saying it. Um, so I am, yeah, I am definitely anxious. It's, it's hard to sort of know where to start. Hi. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Yeah. After bottling it all up for so long, Carol doesn't even know where to start. Nervous. <laughs> Not nervous because of your reaction or anything like that, just nervous. <laughs> Generally nervous. Have you heard of something called fish odor syndrome? Is that anything you've ever Yeah, heard I have that, you know, Carol. Yeah. Well, that's what I've got. Um, unfortunately, this sort of odour comes out of sort of your skin pores. It can come out of your urine. It can come out of your breath. It, it does not really like a body odour in the traditional sort of sense of it, really. We may have detected no, it. No, never. That's what I'm saying. I'll, I'll, yeah. All these years, and we've been on holiday to yeah. Crete and when it was really hot. And yeah. You haven't got anything to be ashamed I about, Carol. I haven't got anything to be ashamed of. Nothing. Well, I realise that so, now. But I think people think... I'm, I'm not trivialising it because I, obviously it's such a... I don't fully yeah. understand it yet, but you've got nothing to be ashamed about. No. Oh, I just think, wow, you know, what the hell took me so long? It's just... I literally could feel the weight come off my shoulders, physically feel it almost. It was just like, oh, wow, you know, I just felt so, so much better for, for talking about it possibly even a bit silly, you just think, my God, why did I take so long to tell her? I'm still a little bit nervous now because I know I've got to go and do the same thing again with my sister, so there's still, I'm not completely like, you know, I want to run around the room because I'm still a little bit nervous about what's to follow. Hello, Rambo. Come on. Denise is Carol's only sister. They've always been close, so she's finding it difficult to admit she's been hiding something from her for so long. Okay, time to sort of to do my thing, really. Time to start talking about it. 